Hello and welcome and good morning. Happy, uh, happy yeah, returns uh, happy to uh, good morning. The, the Triforce <laughs> podcast. Thank you. I've just woken up. Sips, how are you doing? I've also just woken up. Um, well, ish. You've had COVID this week. How are you feeling? Well, oh, I, I didn't have it, but uh, the rest oh. of my family did. Yeah, I, I, I never, thought you. I thought you'd had it. No, like, I never. In... I never tested positive for it. I, I was you just tested. stayed somehow isolated from your yeah. family in your house. Yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. how you've done it. And with the with the restrictions being as they are, it, it was pretty useful because it meant Were that while... Were you sleeping on the sofa or something? What was the deal? No, like... I just like, just normal. I think I spend like, uh, you know, a lot of time in the garage <laughs> by myself. So maybe that's how I avoided it. I don't know. I am amazed but, that uh, you survived. Oh, it was super useful because I, cause I didn't get it. And the, the isolation restrictions being um, as they are currently... It, it meant that I could go out and buy food and and supplies and and actually go do stuff. So I was kind of like the uh, more so than usual the logistics man around the house. You know, I had to go, I had to go, and and I was the hunter gatherer for the for the clan. You know, it was it was it was all right. I can't believe it. Ah, I yeah. just assumed you'd been infected. No, that's amazing. No, um, how are you, P Flex? You feeling good? I'm feeling great. Um, my mum was up last week. Uh, to stay for a week and she got very oh. like my eldest was poorly at the start of the week and then my <laughs> mum got sick and right. I was I was worried because you know she's nearly 80 and and uh, I thought oh for god's sake please don't let her have caught COVID here because that would be like a disaster but it was not it was just a really nasty chest infection uh tried to go to the GPs just to all you need is prescription for a, a, amoxicillin or something like that, some kind of, you know, um, like a penicillin based um, antibiotic. Yeah. yeah. And and they were like, oh no, you'll have to go to the walk in clinic at the hospital. And I was like, oh, fuck. So we got there and it, it was, to be fair, it didn't take long. And she got the prescription and everything and she was all right. I had to drive her back on, on Sunday. And, and so I was just sort of like, I was just really worried, but she also didn't catch COVID. She she just had a really bad chest infection, uh, and a whole bunch of people that week that I played Dota with or that I know in the UK came down with the exact same symptoms and feelings. So it, it's weird how you know we we kind of think we can control these diseases, but like we said before, like I, I don't know how it's possible that. I know like 10 different people that same week that have the same cold. Yeah. It's bonkers. It's, it's it's absolutely bonkers. It's wild, isn't it? It's really weird. Like that that I don't know how much of that is just um bad luck or the fact that you're talking about it that makes them aware of it. You know, I don't know how much coincidental stuff happens anyway or how much you you you, you do it by discussing it. Just, do you know what I mean? Like if, I if you hadn't discussed it would that would you have found out that other people had would you have thought hmm well i mean i didn't hmm. open the conversation with do you have a cold it was just like oh i see like it was literally like we'd be playing dota and someone be like yeah they're going to be top and you'd be like oh you sound <laughs> awful like oh yeah i've got a cold you're like oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> having a having an old old relative like that's a little bit like having a, a fragile pet you know <laughs> that you have to kind of drive them around to make sure they're okay you have to like put them in take them to the vet more regularly it's, yeah i, I can see it's that just a, yeah it's, it's a stress i mean i I've, I've, becoming... you know I, I know that it's uh well as, as you get older your parents stop being you know the ones that look after you and you sort of basically have to look after them yeah i mean it, it's interesting because I, when, when you if you think about the role reversal I'm now the one who has to tell my mum how the remote works and <laughs> how, to, how to do things. And previously, you know, she would be the one teaching me stuff. So uh, I just think, you know, you've got to pay back what they did for you. Um, so I'm always going to look after her. And yeah. I hope other people do the same thing if they can. It's different it, uh, it's across job, cultures you know? too, right? Like yeah. there's, there's more, I think there's, I think in, uh, in, in, in like uh, Asian countries, especially there's more of a, um, there's more of that, right? They, they, oh, like it's absolutely. More the, I gotta yeah, pay. The, I gotta. I gotta look after my parents. Like you know, they looked after me, sort of thing. But I feel like in the West, it's not like that so much at all, right? Like people just sort of dump their parents into a into a home and and never see them again, kind of thing. Yeah, you know? like they're I too mean, much, I, I don't too much know work. if I don't know if they have bigger houses in Asia. I kind of doubt it. No, I, I wouldn't have thought like, so. But you never know. But yeah, yeah, I just think they're culturally set up to say. Yeah, and also I'll be honest with you. I, I understand that we have a very strong desire in in the West, I would say. Um, I, I'm not going to speak for other places because I haven't lived there 
to be independent from your parents as soon as possible, really. Yeah. People want to get out and they want to get on their own. They basically want to just drop in and see them at Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatever. And, and you know, you'll see them occasionally, but you basically want to be independent. Yeah. And I know a lot of parents that want to be independent from their kids once their kids get to a certain age. Yeah, for but sure. But this is not a natural human uh, way for things to be, to be isolated from your family. You, you, we basically should be with them all the time. Yeah. Um, and imagine now, I know a lot of people that talk about the cost of healthcare, uh, sorry, childcare, the cost of childcare is prohibitive to a lot of people. Uh, imagine if you had some old person or a couple of old people living with you who had their pension coming in, looked after the kids while you were at work. Right then, you've got some extra income right? You've got yeah. childcare sorted. You're with your family, even just from an economic point of view. If you want to be that brutal about it, I think it might actually be pretty beneficial. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of downsides. When my mum was here, I almost lost my mind, but it happens. You know, I'm yeah, sure yeah. You, you you get used to it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I didn't have to do any housework for like a week. She did it all before I could even notice she'd doing it. She was, she was doing it. Yeah. So I'd just be finishing dinner and the dishwasher's already going on. I was like, what the fuck? Like, sit down and relax for a minute. She's like, I can't relax till this is done. Having some old person around breaking their back, doing all the shitty jobs you don't want to do, is great. In all I, honesty, I, so. if 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 that's like the the situation, like with your parents, and I think yeah, go for it. But I think for like with a lot of people, it's it's not like my, like my parents would, for example, not do that. Like if if my parents lived with me, it would just be a hindrance and and <laughs> right. not a help. <laughs> like it would just be the worst. Um, but I, but I know a lot of people whose parents are like, are, are really good like that, you know, really, yeah. really hands on help with like everything, help with the kids and stuff. I mean, in my situation, it's a bit different as well. I live very far away from my parents. So that day to day right, sort of right. stuff would, would never, would never be anyway kind of thing. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's a weird one, isn't it? I don't know. Like, uh, I think if you're lucky enough to be like close to your family and, 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 you know, they, they're still like a really big part of your life going into you having um children of your own and, and and building a life and everything i think it's it's got to be great right but yeah it's not, it doesn't it work for be. everybody for sure no obviously i mean i know a lot of people who couldn't wait to get away from their parents because their parents were incredibly toxic and unpleasant like yeah that, well that's, like, yeah, that's you another get, thing. yeah and that's and this i mean is, yeah you have absolutely. to get away from them if that's the case because you can't this is you can't have that in I your had life chat right? with someone this week because they were like i've watched i watched this um inventing anna on netflix right it's mm -hmm. kind of about this anna delvey kind of saga where she uh, i this, saw yeah that's the most watched uh, show on netflix in like uh, in, in yeah, a while it's very long-winded and it's like a dramatization of this relatively short story actually that probably could have been done in a half an hour long documentary but it's sort of dragged out to eight hours of um fairly mediocre tv um, but julia garner's great as this kind of weird yeah she's like a fake sort of, air heiress or something like, like yeah, yeah it's kind of like and it's come out at the same time as the tinder swindler um right. on netflix as well which is this kind of thing that's sort of taken taken oh, is it on you? a bit of its own is, are you the tinder <laughs> swindler well, no. So he's a sort of similar guy who's kind of his his thing, his scam. Right. He's a little bit like um, his scam. A, I love how he's like, no, his scam was different to mine. I had a different yeah. scam that his I was scam doing. Is like, it's, it's like a Ponzi scheme, <laughs> right? Where he borrows money from one person and then uses it to pay someone else. You see, right? And his sort of scam is that oh, you know. I'm a I'm a uh, an heir to this diamond empire, and um, there's these people who are after me, and so I can't use my credit cards. So can I? Can you can you lend me some money? You know, and so he funds this lavish lifestyle, but it's always relying on the next con, right? Much like a Ponzi scheme. Like as soon as one of the cons falls through, he he can't pay his bills suddenly, and he's trapped, right? Um, and so he has to really work around and grift a bit before he can get the sort of thing rolling again. Um, and so he sort of bilked a lot of these um, women from across the globe because he was sort of flying around, you know, living this sort of incredibly jet set lifestyle. Um, and anyway, Inventing Anna, it's a very sort of similar thing where she is this person who is is kind of doesn't have any money, but has managed to ingratiate herself into a sort of groups of people in society where you just it doesn't matter. You know, they, they will pay for you. They'll cover everything. And until you eventually manage to sort of get your business off the ground by borrowing, and then suddenly you're independently wealthy. It's almost like the American sort of fake it till you make it mantra, yeah. you know, kind of thing, where she obviously she did obviously bilk a lot of people out of a lot of money. <laughs> but 
Uh, but kind of it was it was in a really interesting way. But the, but she, you reminded me of this both because both of these people had fallen out with their families, and there's this sort of scene where the journalist goes back to Germany um, and finds Anna Delvey's family and sort of talks to them. And they're just like, "Yep, yeah, we've forgotten about her." And, they, and she's like, "Do you not? Do you not call her or anything?" And, I'm, and she, they're like, "No." And 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 so a person I was watching this with was like, "But that's let's cast them in this kind of. They they seem like nice people, but why why do they not care about their daughter?" And I'm like, "Fucking hell! If your daughter's some sort of scam artist who's like a, t- a terrible dad, and it's the same thing with the the um, Tinder swindler guy. They went and found his family, and they sort of talked to them as if they were somehow responsible, <laughs> or like I don't yeah, know, yeah. or." or, or or, or had some sort of like any um, any say in what was going on yeah. or any idea uh, what was happening. Like because I think we haven't people... talked to him for twenty five years because he's a exactly. fucking asshole. It turns out exactly. <laughs> yeah, and I think that, that I respect honestly people that cut ties like that with with their asshole don't, children don't in the same way that, that I respect people who cut cut ties with their asshole parents. Like right, I I, I agree that some people change and that like you know. The blood is thick some, of the water. Some do, but blah, honestly, blah, 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 blah. like, I, I mean, I've lived long enough to know that most people do not change. Like, uh, <laughs> past a certain point in their life, if they're, if, if they are how they are, that's how they are. Like, it's very hard to change, um, you know, like major parts of your personality and stuff. Like, I'm not saying it doesn't happen because I'm sure it does. I'm sure somebody out there probably has like a good example or, or whatever. But it, generally speaking, I don't think most people change. Like, I think you know i think you are who you are and you know if it works fine and if it doesn't well well what can you do you know like it's just uh you could you could try to work on it but i I don't know man like i've just known so many people like like you know nice people toxic people whatever and like they they're they're always they're always the same they never change it's just it's Mm. that's just my my here's my question do you guys think that that there is kind of a, a push in the media when someone has come out as an absolute asshole to try and bury them under as much, yeah, we all hate them as possible, with like a collective sort of outpouring of, of hatred. That the the ultimate thing to achieve is getting someone's parents to say, yeah, they're a piece of shit. Because it's like, <laughs> wow, yeah, even their parents was a, it's like kind of a gotcha. And I think when when someone has done something where they're like, this person is a complete asshole. If you can get their parents to come out and say, yeah, they're an asshole. Everyone's like, wow, like that's well, even yeah. worse. That makes it but, even worse. Yeah. yeah. So I kind of think that going to people's parents, even though they're not responsible, like once your kid is a grown up and off doing stuff, like, I mean, they, they, the parents of the guys that did the Columbine shooting, they, they spoke to them. There was like a documentary where they're interviewing them. Yeah. And they were like, we didn't know this was coming. And everyone, there's kind of two implications. One, wow, you must be really ashamed. It's like, let's get that on camera, which is kind of shitty. But I then think also, they are probably very ashamed. Of course. They They've definitely do sure. feel, like, what did they do wrong? Where right. did they go yeah. wrong? Isn't that, isn't that the, the other, other reason? Question? Yeah, that's why the other they're question. being interviewed. Well, so did, did, did they ever, uh, you know, uh, when they were five, uh, what what were they like? Were, yeah. Did, you did know they torture back then? insects? And, and you did nothing. You go. You guys did nothing. Yeah, yeah, Is yeah, that yeah. right? And now they're an asshole. It's like fuck off. Like what? Jesus. What are they meant to do? Honey, I think the kid's a serial killer. He's two. Yeah, I could just see it. I, I could feel it in my water. This I wonder kid's, if uh, this kid's a murderer. Like like all joking aside, I wonder I wonder if like there are cases like that though. Like what like like a young Jeffrey Dahmer or whatever. And you're like, well, <laughs> well uh, honey, I caught him sniffing the bones in the backyard again. Uh, like yeah, like I wonder if some people can really see it coming, like from a young age, you know? Like Honey, I saw him on Tinder. He was trying to convince someone he was a twenty one year old diamond. He was jacking from- off in his diamond again uh but when's this gonna stop he's 20 years old for fuck's sake uh jesus you know like i wonder if people i wonder if there is like cases where you know you can see it coming from a mile away and then sure i think it should be the other way around because it's always these kids have been bullied or something by some some actual asshole do you know what i mean who's 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 like fucked them up somehow like at a certain point this uh, we we should let bullies family and hold them more responsible. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's I, that's that's always stuff you it's, hear, right? It's a, it's a it's always like a really lethal combination of lots of things. I I feel like you know it's not it's I it's rarely just like one one thing, right? Like it's you're right. I think people like the simplicity of it being. Of course, people, no, it's yeah, incredibly it's, it's, complex. It's a lot more digestible, but like, but the reality is, is that everybody is pretty complicated, and it it would it just takes a a, a lot of 
unfortunate um you know combinations of things to occur for people to end up just completely mental or I, whatever. I think i think that at the same time part of that part of the things that lead to these you know i guess like school shootings type things is the the availability and the cultural attitudes towards this yeah. in certain places and you know i think having guns casually available like i was listening to a criminal podcast the other day about this sort of 15 year old who you know him and his friends had f managed to find a gun yeah <laughs> in america sure. they just found a gun mm -hmm. and and they were walking home from school and they were like just stealing they were using it to steal money out of people's like like just cash out of people's pockets kind of just yeah. almost like casually and obviously he went to prison for life <laughs> for armed robbery <laughs> multiple counts of armed robbery well i mean uh, it's, and he was he was went, he just went to adult prison for life it's well, it's, <laughs> it was it's like, pretty fucking distressing okay. though like i mean it sounds comical but like if you're on the receiving end of that that sucks man like that is going to affect you probably for the rest of your life that's going to give you anxiety that's going to you know what i mean like you're you're sure. you're never gonna forget that uh, that that interaction, that negative interaction with somebody, right? Like, yeah, you'll totally. Need therapy, it's an awful, everything. Place, awful, yeah. awful thing to experience, and uh, you know, I think that it's it's. Yeah, I'm. Sh I, but at the same time, you know, like we the. So I think it's it's changed now, but up until very recently, you know, America was still putting kind of kids in jail for life. Um, which I think I think there was a big thing that came down that said, look, if you went if you got jailed for life um, when you were under sixteen, yeah. you could or, or, <laughs> you could have your sentence like kind of re revisited. Re yeah, there was a, um, I remember if you remember I was talking about that Philly DA program like a, a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was I a case of that, that as really well. There was that. a guy and he was sixteen and he shot and shot and well murdered somebody. Um, and which is not a trivial crime of course sure. not no but um but they 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 eventually let him out uh, early but he was like um you know almost 50 years old by the time he got out so he'd spent from the age of 16 until you know yeah, nearly 50 like years three old times as long as he'd been he'd alive been in jail in prison yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's like, like and you know you could you, you know you're you're they're interviewing him and he's a you know he's a grown man who realizes like the gravity of what he's done and is so if you're in maths and that guy's poking you will you shoot him uh, will he gonna do it again yeah. it's like uh, uh it's it, maybe uh it's so uh <laughs> so, it's so if you're riding the bus to school it, it's, <laughs> it's just like, it's wild <laughs> though isn't it because it's like it's like a with a lot life, of this right? stuff they're 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 trying to, to to blanket cover a lot of eventualities but really it, it it comes down it's it's a case by case thing right like some people like are are reformable i think and some people just simply are not like and 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 i think it, it comes down to that and it's case by case for sure you know like i don't know it's it, there's, it's a, there's a philip k dick um amazon show um really? uh, which, which uh, on, on prime yeah it's called it's called philip k dick's electric dreams um and it's kind of like a black mirror style um what is this new series no, it's a couple of years old. Um, it's like oh, I just how did I miss this? Man, someone mentioned Dick's it to fan. me. God, every and every week, my 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 Philip K. Dick Appreciation Society meetings, and nobody mentioned this. To and me? so he obviously it's ten sort of hour long episodes based on his work, and obviously they vary absolutely wildly from kind of very cool and interesting sci-fi ideas to stupid um, one of them's got <laughs> i love that one of them's got <laughs> steve I love that spectrum. that's good oh man so yeah you don't, don't quite know i'm I, i've definitely get. spoken about philip k dick previously on the podcast so i apologize to anyone that's caning through all 200 plus episodes and, and here's this again yeah but he he did a lot of amphetamines when he was writing, right? Because um, mm. a lot of writers in that era were really fucking cranking out. Man, I feel uh, like I need yeah, to do the, more amphetamines the, the while I'm streaming. You know, like uh, <laughs> like oh, you hear all these guys in history that are like, yeah, he did all of his best work and he was jacked up on this and that. Like, I need to get jacked up on this and that. Like we now is my time. It's my, my fucking time to shine, baby. Like uh, come on, I, we need a you know I got to change it up a little bit god i gotta hit the hard stuff i think yeah well it worked for philip um, yeah 
But yeah, some of his stories were absolutely nuts. And he would often go down. He was a down, wild guy. He was. But yeah. he would often go down a rabbit hole. Like his rabbit hole was the, the confusion between what is real. Right, that's yeah. in summary eighty percent of Philip K. Dick's stories. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the, uh, there's a fifteen percent after that are a, a seemingly endless war between two sides on an alien planet, and one side comes up with some clever strategy to beat the other, normally involving robots that look like people. Uh, and then the other five percent are probably the ones you've heard of, or the bonkers ones. Uh, so things like the man in the, in the high. Tower. I always can never remember if it's castle or tower, but either way. That oh, one. the the one where Hitler's still alive. Right, the right, right. The reality, one where the, yeah. the, the is that the a Philip K. Won. Dick thing as well? Yeah, that was a the novella. All right. Yeah, castle, that was a novella. Castle. Um, yeah, and is bonkers because there are moments in it where people see the alternate reality and that with their own eyes, and mm. it's like not clear as usual. Being Philip K. Dick, it's not clear whether it's a hallucination. Or whether they're actually seeing some other reality poking into their own, it's unclear. And this is exactly the case in these this series. Like in in many of them, sort of, it's kind of you're thrown into this odd universe where not a lot is necessarily explained to yeah. you. And you know, like I think the first one of the first ones I watched was there's like um, there's like a, a a lesbian policewoman living in the future. Okay, when she goes to when she puts on this VR headset, she like really gets immersed in the personality of a straight game des- male, very billionaire game designer. Okay, right. So she switches between being this lesbian super cop and billionaire game designer. That's crazy. Those are my two personas as well. <laughs> that's <laughs> incredible. incredible. That's, he's the billionaire game designer who's designed a game that's incredibly immersive, and he's and he basically the character he or she is confused about which one of them is real. Right, but yeah. they have to take the headset off and either and die in one of the worlds. But they don't know whether the world that they're going to die Man, in is, is going to be pick? the one which is real. Which one would you pick? You I mean, it's really hard to pick. Billionaire yeah. would be pretty sweet. Man, Same. lesbian super cop would be fucking sweet that too. That does though. also sound pretty cool, but a lot more dangerous, and you've got less money. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've I've just sort of spoiled it, but I mean, I haven't really spoiled it because the whole episode is about you making up your own mind, if you like, about which one is real. Do you know what I mean? And the, the episode suggests lots of different arguments about this could be which way it could be around it. I thought it was pretty cool, but yeah, there's there's a bunch of other ones. There's like um. One which is like Starship Trooper style, where they're engaged in this bizarre war with these aliens and sending ships to fight them, and they're, they're sort of come limping back, you know, and Earth dying, which is quite weird. And there's there's one there's one that's just super weird, where um where Steve Buscemi's in it, um and it's just fucking bonkers, like oh, this, so they're all they're all mental little ideas. But the reason that I mentioned it is because there's one of them is like set in this sort of U.S. school. Where basically it's kind of this futuristic idea of what a US school is, where they're they they're constantly scared of terrorist attacks. You know, they have like blast windows on the school yeah. in case someone attacks the school. It's kind of this. It's become this kind of incredibly, but also they have this incredibly um surveilled situation where all the kids have this little Apple wristwatch, right? Where it basically just tracks their heart rate, it tracks what they're doing, it tracks where they are, it tracks everything about them, who they talk to, who they interact with. And so, it, but in, in a way, what it's doing is it's brainwashing these kids, right, to be a certain way. And it's very, it's very, it's very clever how it's it's just it's just like a couple of steps from where, where we are now. And you see how like technology could be used to kind of make people make people um what's it, uh, f- f- active uh, fundamentalized or whatever do you know what i mean like kind of kind of make people angry about right. this, the the way things are just in a very simple way you know you give them very gentle nudges and it's so easy to convince someone who's r- relatively normal to quickly be um dangerous radicalized yeah, yeah. is, is yeah, what it's, it's about scary. and it's 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 scary yeah there's there's a couple of ones about the president i think they were I think they were all pretty interesting, and I mean, I will say, not great some of them. Um, but because, but you're always going to get with, with an anthology, partly because there's different writers on each episode, there's different directors on each episode. You know, there's no necessarily quality checking. They're almost like we're going to just make let ten of you make these things, and then 
or we'll put them out and then we'll choose which order to put them out. We'll put the best one out first, <laughs> you know, we'll hide some of the bad ones in the middle and then we'll finish with a good one, you know, so that people think it was a good series and we get another one. But I don't think they did get another series. Shame. Um, so, yeah, it's on Amazon Prime. But I, I just wonder how much the effect of the amphetamines made him question reality. <laughs> like, it's such a strong theme. But what if nothing's real? Dude's out of his mind on coke and, and, <laughs> yes. and amphetamines. This is basically 10 episodes of what if nothing is real? Yeah. What, if, what if I'm in a weird place and that's, I don't know funny. quite who I am? That, that's the problem. Like, you can get the Philip K. Dick anthologies. There's like a million of them. Um, they're huge. And you could just pour through them. And there, there is a lot of similarity uh, between them, which is funny. But uh, I, I'm sure if you had to pick 10 Philip K. Dick stories, you would still struggle to, to not be locked into the what if nothing's real <laughs> kind of theme. Uh, I just find it funny. Whereas if you look at Black Mirror, I feel like Black Mirror had a very similar kind of um, overriding trope, if you like, that was occasionally there were variations, but it was like near future, something that currently exists taken to an extreme. Yeah. W was sort I, of always, like I never seen Black Mirror, but my perception of it is that like it's all these like mini stories about like these kind of like 1984-esque scenarios or something some you know, of that scenarios. yeah yeah but to a lot of it about about social if you could imagine the not social media but the way that social interaction yeah. has changed it's lots of stuff it's that like, kind of uh, thing taken you know oh if i get a hundred likes on facebook uh somebody dies and stuff like that it's like all these like weird uh is it like a bit like that is it like this? well so there's there's one of the earlier episodes um with bryce dallas howard in who is who is she's brilliant in it she basically you actually have like a rating like your uber right rating um and when you interact with people they give you a plus or a minus sort of thing and they rate you and you have an average in order to get the really good jobs or you know get a really nice mortgage or whatever you need to have a very high rating it's close to or five. get to a nice coffee shop exactly or you need to have a, a, the right rating so if your rating yeah. is too low they say i'm sorry you can't come in so you literally have like how liked you are by other people on you all the time oh okay um so that's a really interesting concept yeah it's like it's like an uber rating or an ebay because you uber uber drivers you obviously have like you have a rating right. as well, though they rate you, right? And so, in a sense, they could decide not to pick you up if you've got a bad rating, Indeed. right? Right. And, and, and is that taken to a broad, stretched out to what what that would actually be like if all aspects of your life revolved around? A lot of the episodes are that sort of thing, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And also, like the idea of it spiraling, like someone who's got a bad rating, you're more likely to give them another bad rating. But also, people are trading good ratings for favors and things like this, and like. You know, it suddenly becomes this kind Currency of or something, knife yeah. at your throat, right? Where you kind of have to do things you don't want to do that are, you know, in order or like or like grovel or be a certain way in order to try and. It just leads to this kind of. I don't know. It's a little bit like in America how everyone is all grovelly when when it, it, in in restaurants to get to get tips. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Just, I, I'm yes. Not, I'm not saying that. It's just like like uh, the fakeness of serve servers usually. I mean, it's not always the case. But like certainly, like sometimes that fake niceness is so foreign to us as English people who've never had a, a server smile in their life. You know, yeah. it's it's kind of very strange. Man, British to customer service that. is really something else, isn't it? It's just like holy. It's crap. reassuringly. It's reassuringly yeah. shit. Yeah. Reassuringly honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If if you've been away on vacation somewhere nice and you and you come back, you're like, well, I'm definitely home. <laughs> like uh, like uh, people are grunting at you and ignoring you and stuff but, but you're right you it is reassuring watch black mirror though it's good yeah, good it's stuff really, it's, really it's good. all it's all near future stuff whereas whereas this is more kind of in the apocalypse and and in space and you know like weird scenarios but yeah like it's it's not as touchable in a sense because it's it's um you, you're the, the 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 characters are always almost as confused as you are, right? In, yeah, in, yeah. yeah. In, um, so, in by this. the way, my Uber rating is four point eight two. Wow. And I and I've been told that that's really bad. So I was kind of startled. And that's kind of I interesting. I don't think because, I think mine's lower than that. Mine's right, like four point seven. Four point eight two. Yeah. I've literally said that, and they're like, "How do you get four point eight two? What are you doing? Are you like farting in the car? Are you like being racist to the driver and stuff?" It's like. No, I, I, I just, I don't know. Like sometimes I think I forget to rate them, but I almost always tip them, and and uh, you know we chat and everything like that. But I must have pissed off some driver at some point. I don't know if 
a non-rating counts as a zero or a one or whatever, or if it just defaults to a three if you don't rate each other. I have no idea. I don't, most, think it, I don't think 4. it rates 8. at all. I, I don't think it adds to the average. I, I think, well, it sometimes, do you use it to like put other people in the car? Sometimes, or like Sometimes yeah. if, if you keep them waiting. No, I never so, keep I them mean, waiting. I call a lot of Ubers for people and put them in the car. And, you know, I don't know what they're doing. Um, and also, Is that the, sometimes, the many yeah. babes that come to the, the Lewis Love Pat? <laughs> mm. That's not that. Go home, baby. Go home. You know, the class you move is an Addison Lee. Just saying. You've got to get her an Addison Lee. Lee and ship a home in that that's the play right everybody uses uber addison lee you know that's the classier version that's like oh i see i see is that true yeah the drivers wear right. suits and shit you never been know. in an addison lee no never. i've never even heard of it really no. they're like one of the biggest private car hires in the world i'd say sounds like a fucking investment bank yeah <laughs> it does that's why it's so classy yeah addison lee for travel and deliveries that matter. We are, they are not sponsored. There you go. No, um, we are not sponsored by Addison Lee. I've never even heard of it. That surprises wow. me. So what, that's that's like a rich people's Yeah, that's a, you wouldn't call her an Uber. Uber, you'd call her an Addison. Yeah, sure. Anna Delvey is getting that. I, I know how to treat the ladies. Ladies, you know. I know how, I I know how to look up. Anna Addison Lee. She has this odd accent, really, really odd. It's so weird. It's like the kind of preppy American rich girl with a tinge of Russian. It's just so weird. With you have a to tinge hear of it. Russian. Nice. Yeah. Cool. It's like got Russian sort of underneath it. Julia Garner does a good job, apparently, with it. With it, it's such a weird, weird sound. And I think that that's maybe maybe what made her stand out is this kind of odd person, you know, because she was, she was she was in the art world. She was sort of. I don't know. Sorry, going back to Anna Delvey. So it's 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 hot. It stayed with me a bit that that show. You said it was really, really mediocre, like though. It, yeah, but it's I just because it's so fucking long. Though. Oh, I've spent right. eight hours watching it this week. I feel like it's like I didn't. I didn't. I, a lot of that was on my phone. I must admit. Well, um, you could have been watching eight hours of what I've been watching this week, and uh, that is uh, the new season of Married at First Sight Australia. Uh, which is uh, <laughs> as, you, just as you would TV, expect, isn't it? yeah, it's pretty, uh, it's it's pretty wild. Uh, it's I mean, uh, parts of it are are quite enjoyable to watch. Honestly, it's uh, it's very fun to watch with my wife because we both have a similar kind of attitude towards it. You know, like we don't really take it seriously or whatever, and we make lots of jokes and stuff. And it's 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 it's, it's good fun. It, we do the same with The Apprentice, honestly. Like The Apprentice is a bit like that too. But it's I, I don't know the 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 viewing experience is fun. It's not so much the the show that's any good. You know what I mean? The it's good. The the, the news of that is that the network bosses Endemol and all these people have issued a warning to the 2022 cast to stay away from inverted commas desperate former stars yes right? well <laughs> because apparently well they the are the first they, sight people are very hungry to stay famous of course no yeah. like there was a big in the last season there was like constant references to oh that's you know they're doing that because it's going to look good on instagram and, and and whatever and stuff and you think I don't know how many followers these people have going into a show like this. I wouldn't have imagined like too many sort of thing unless they were like, you know, big big time influencers ahead of this or whatever, but not none. I, I didn't know of any of them being having like any big sort of presence on social media or right. whatever. But I, if you're good looking mm -hmm. and stupid and have no discernible talent, this is your way to make it. There's this. We, yeah. We've created a way. It used to just be modeling. Oh, man. You're 100 percent right. And the issue is, is that when they're casting people for this show, they want good looking people. They don't want like the, me. The, yeah. Like the baldies and the ugly ones. Uh, <laughs> you know, they want they want fucking basically Instagram stars already. Right. Um, so they want someone that people are going to basically because it, it's like a mutually beneficial thing. Right. The shark is the show and the contestants are like the pilot fish. Right. And they both benefit. The show benefits from having good looking people that then develop a big following over the course of the show because you want to tune in and look at these attractive people. And frankly, a lot of people want to look at them being attractive, but also enjoy the fact that they're acting like idiots. Yeah, yeah. Like everyone would love to see someone that they really think, oh, this, she's so beautiful. She's so great. But if she slipped on a banana skin, I guarantee you people would enjoy that even more. Sure. So essentially, you want to see these attractive people being vapid and boring because it makes you feel better about yourself. You know, even though they're better looking than me, this girl's an idiot. You know what I mean? So it's, yeah, and, and yeah. it's sort of developed into this big... Uh, well, cycle. it's 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 weird because you, some people you kind of you almost root for. You're like, I actually, you know, like this couple and I hope that they right. do OK or whatever. You know, like they're 
they're they're they're fine and but then you know you the the cracks show after a while and of course you you know you 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 can change your mind or or whatever and then some people you're just immediately like this person does not stand a chance like (laughs) they're never gonna it's never gonna work they're they're broken or whatever like uh but it's i don't know man it's what was that there was one guy that just escaped it was quite a big deal at the time. They, they did it at the This American Life podcast where they talked to him. And essentially he was on one of these shows. I don't know if it was The Bachelor or Married at First Sight or whatever. Uh, but he just legged it. Yeah. He escaped from the compound and legged it. And of course, they can't detain him. No, of course they, not. They tried to sort of encourage him not to escape and sort of yeah. kind of tried to contain him in a way. But he just climbed over a fence and fucking left. Yeah. And I, I was like, that guy's a hero. I love that well, guy. Well, you have to have, you You probably have like a bit of a crisis of self-awareness like yeah. in the middle like, of filming where you're just like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, and like, But that's how you know he was he was a decent person, I think. I Because I think a lot of them don't have that crisis. Nah, yeah. <laughs> Are you saying it's like the Milgram experiment? <laughs> where it turns out that like most people are just willing to you reckon like the, the big brother contestants or whoever's in ch- the, the, the staff you know they run in and they're like can try to contain him and like oh talk him down you right. know they could convince him do, through their authority it's like no no i'm the showrunner you have right. to stay you have to stay mate i'm saying that if he's one armed, of those rare people who resists authority the other people in the house you would have martial law within a day and right. someone would declare themselves as the leader if you gave them roles and told them that the way to win the show was to stop this person escaping whatever it would be absolute chaos yeah absolute chaos especially because right. these people have no self reflection or introspection at all they exist oh as god. reactive oh emotional god, creatures you're right this is like that other experiment that was done, the one with the the prisoners, the Stanford yeah. Prison Experiment. hundred percent. Because the thing about the Stanford Prison Experiment was, well, if you don't know, look it up, it's really interesting. But basically there were a load of, of um, students who were, who were prisoners and students who were guards. And it very quickly became this kind of very weird, like horrific kind of bullying, not like... Uh, Abu Ghraib or something, but right. you know, a little bit like it was. It was kind of a bit cruel and unusual quite quickly. Yeah, and they classic had to stop it. old school experiment where they were like, "Let's fuck with some people and see what." But happens. of course, the conclusions were always slightly flawed because they used it like much like the Milgram experiment was used to to say, "Oh well, you know." Turns out that humans are just obedient, so maybe all those Nazis weren't so bad after all. Right. Um, and a little bit like that. It was sort of a little bit like that with the Stanford Prison Experiment. It was kind of a grim conclusion. It was like, oh, most people were just going to turn into dicks if they're given power. It was kind of this weird thing. But but actually, in the Stanford Prison Experiment, the 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 the, 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 the students were kind of encouraged to. They were they were knew they were being watched. They were kind of. Be like playing up a little bit for the yeah. camera in some cases, yeah. and I think in Big Brother and all these other things, of course they are when they're 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 gonna exaggerate themselves. They can't. They can't However, st- Lewis, stop what you've it. got to remember is that in that experiment, I don't think it ran for several months. If you think about the Big Brother house, these people are isolated, and I think they develop social rules and like a little world of their own yeah because human beings are very adaptive they go a bit like insane a prison, i think yeah, when they're like in prison there. yeah and you, you almost like forget culture. at times right. that you were being yeah. watched all the time like if you the more you watch someone the less they notice they're being watched i mean think how many cameras there are in in britain yeah. there's more cctv cameras in britain per capita they than can't any other maintain country. the facade exactly forever. A little bit like, you know, on RuPaul's Drag Race and that as well. You see them initially, they're very, they're, 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 they don't drop their persona or, or their, their their facade, right? But then so, uh, eventually they get irritable or annoyed or pissed off and they, they can't sort of, they can't keep it up. And you, then sort of their real personality shines through. And it turns out some of them are assholes or some of them are super nice. Um, oh, actually, we there, are we are it? third, sorry. The US has the most surveilled people. Really? We're Does third. it? Yeah, it goes US, then China, then us. Oh, wow. And we, we have mm. half the number that the US has. So apologies. What is, what, I mean, what is that? I mean that's surveilled. I mean that's just number of cameras, though, right? Like, I would say surveillance necess- cameras counts as surveilling. I don't you? know if that. I don't know if they'd be watched though. Like how many? I'd rather know how many watchers there were. You know, I think <laughs> that's the watchers. Good question. How many, how watch- many watchers? I mean, I know if the, no one's the watching the security cameras. The watches the, the fucking traffic camera on Heathrow. Listen to me, dickhead. Sometimes there's no way to get around. 
a parked fucking car in the main lane. You have to go into the bus lane. Don't fucking send me a 75 quid fine. I was in there for two seconds. There was nothing on the road. How am I, what am I meant to sit there for a minute while this I think, fucking again, twat does it? 75 no, it's not. fine? It's done yeah. by a con- machine. Jeez. That's not done by a human, I it's promise some, you. Some dickhead did it. I guarantee you it's some no, dickhead. No, it's not. Sat there wanking off about how he's fine. Oh, I got another one. Uh. Some no, no, no! It's dickhead. automated. It's, it's, it's like a, it's like a, it's like as soon as the car goes in there, it like prints it off. Okay, instantly. answer me this then, Lewis. How come sometimes it doesn't get me? Oh, because sometimes maybe you're not cross. Maybe maybe it's- you're mm. getting like a bonus day, lull you into a false sense of security, get no, you ready. He for sneezed a- at that exact moment. He was like, hey! <laughs> <laughs> "What in a split second yeah. that you'd weaved in and out of the bus lane?" <laughs> exactly. Uh, before we continue, this week's episode is sponsored by our friends at Manscaped, oh, who are the global boy. leader the in below-the-waist hygiene, turning men's shower dreams into their favourite routines with the new Ultra Premium Collection, an all-in-one hygiene and skin and hair bundle designed to upgrade your morning shower yeah, routine. Can't treat yourself. I mean, come on. Like, get in there, get all steamed up, get lathered up, shave your balls. Shave your yeah, back. Yeah, lather on shave the your cologne-infused Ultra Premium Body Wash with aloe vera and sea salt. Oh. <laughs> Keep your skin and balls feeling clean and moisturized. It doesn't have any of that mint shit that numbs your balls, either. This is, no. this is, this is not that. You can feel everything. Oh. You can take care of your hair at the same time with a non-greasy formula of coconut water green tea and turmeric apply to your armpits too oh, why not Lord. shit you know I i'm know. gonna be doing that i like to get all <laughs> lathered up under there uh, there's also a deodorant aluminum free there's a moisturizer spray if you've got tattoos or dry skin Sorry, aluminum aluminium free aluminium. aluminium it's got no aluminium, aluminium in. you can put it's it on your the balls aluminium plant no aluminium on your balls <laughs> <laughs> it's got there's also a lip balm, uh, oh, shit. which is a, a free gift when you buy the Ultra Premium Collection. You can get that at manscaped.com. You can use the code TRIFORCE to get 20% off and free shipping. Manscaped.com, code TRIFORCE. Thank you very much. Balm your balls. Um, love your balls. Love yourself. Love Manscaped. I made that one up. I, I made that fra- that made that up. I made that little catchphrase Congratulations. up. Congratulations. Uh, manscaped.com slash TRIFORCE. On with the show. Oh well, I've got I've got to change the topic for you guys. This is this is funny. This is so I rewatched the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy over the last week. Right, right? We, it's brilliant. It's, it's worth great. watching. It's great. I Stuck on the yeah. first one. I was like, what are we going to watch? And with Scott, I was like, let's fucking watch Fellowship. And once you've watched the first one, you're going to watch the other two. For That's sure, just yeah. the way. Yeah, it goes. there's no way. Yeah, because it's so enjoyable. Exactly. I love it. So love the, it. these are some of the casting decisions that were almost made uh, for the movie. So Daniel Day Lewis was the first pick to play Aragorn. Okay, really? He was going to be Aragorn, yeah. And he said, I don't want to do it. I don't do fantasy. Right. It's fucking no thanks. And they pushed and pushed. They really, really wanted him, but he couldn't get it. He would have been, he would have been good. I think actually. he would have been a superb Aragorn. I'm not saying Viggo Mortensen didn't do a great job. I thought he was fantastic, but I think Danny Day-Lewis was would have been very, I, I very honestly good. think he was fine, but I, I Ru- think I Russell Crowe was also offered the role. I think of Russell Crowe is Ar- of Aragorn. I think Russell Crowe as Aragorn would have sucked, and yeah, I, 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 I don't mind Russell Crowe in certain roles, but I don't think I don't think it would I mean, have been good. Yeah, Vigo, like he's almost he's almost a bit Vigo. non-human, isn't he? And, and mean, his accent almost... as well, I think, makes him seem like some fantasy character. Yeah, yeah rather than just a slight does. Australian burr. You know, Frodo, we got to get the bloody ring to Mordor, mate. Don't worry, you've got my sword. You know, it's, it doesn't work as well. So here's another one. Sean Connery. Sean Connery as Gandalf. Okay. I, for Aragorn, all of the all of the casting uh, considerations all seem to be like greasy looking people. Like, is that just an Aragorn thing? You know, like... I think so. They look so greasy. He, he was also yeah. offered Dumbledore. He was also offered Dumbledore and turned that down. I don't do fantasy. It's, it's <laughs> <I not>. <laughs> Liam Neeson. I, I'm glad. The problem with Sean Connery, uh, the problem with the more famous these names, right, the, the more issues with them having to make their own, like, change up, their, like, like enforce their own rules. Like um, Orson Welles in that bloody movie uh, that he did where he basically completely ruined it and it made, was it John Carpenter? It went, um, what am I thinking of? Prince of Darkness. Um, oh, no, you're thinking of the movie Body Parts. I'm thinking of, not, no, I'm not thinking of John Carpenter. I'm thinking of um, who did The Godfather. Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando. Jimmy Dean? Yeah. <laughs> 
on the cover of a magazine. Antique Mala Brando in Apocalypse Now. Oh, uh, of course, um, yeah. Colonel, and how that was Colonel almost Kuntz, an Kurtz. absolute fucking disaster. No, he, I yeah. mean, it was, it was bizarre, but I think those scenes were really good, what they ended up with. I really do. Wait, I why, think one it, of you guys doesn't like Apocalypse Now, right? No, Apocalypse Now's great. I fucking but love that movie. Oh, who but am I it, thinking it, of that does not like Apocalypse it is Now a, at It's a miracle that it was actually made. Huh. Because yeah, it oh, was, no, it was. The, the, it was chaos on the production. Like, there's a documentary yeah. about it that's well worth seeing. Because there was typhoons and all sorts of shit. And sorry, yeah, Marlon Brando was, was an absolute Right, but we're not, I don't disaster. think we're laying it at fucking Brando's feet here. Coppola was fucking insane. Like, Martin yeah. Sheen? They're all insane. Martin Sheen almost Harrison died. Harrison Ford is in that movie. Yeah, um, yeah. Lawrence Fishburne is in that movie. Who else is in that movie? There's tons a whole of people. Bunch of people. Dennis yeah. Hopper? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fuck me, man. It's a big, it's a big one. Yeah. So Liam Neeson as Boromir, he was going to be Boromir, but he turned it down because he didn't want to die at the start of a trilogy again, the same way he did in Phantom Menace. Right. Really? Yeah. Man, He's another he person. dodged a bullet dying at the he start did. of that one. So though. get this, Bruce Willis as Boromir, he really wanted to be in it, and Jackson said no. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Bruce Willis. Man, can you imagine the fucking horns go off? <laughs> Gondor needs aid! Yippee motherfuckers! he has got his sunglasses on! So th <laughs> this, this to gun. me, is this is the most important thing that we dodged in the entire trilogy. You, I don't think you're ready for this one. James Corden as Sam. Holy shit! We really dodged that one. Yeah. Fuck! Although he is little chubby enough, he could do He's it. Huge, I would not, He's a little chubby I would hobbit. not be able to enjoy the trilogy. I can see it. It's so... It's, it's, he looks like a, a hobbit, doesn't he? He's a cunt. He's a cunt. I know, but he looks like a hobbit. He's, I don't oh give a God, shit. I could really see it. He, it might be amazing. We might have a no, different dude. opinion of James Corden now. Do you Corden know what? Now. I would not be able to rewatch the trilogy. I'd be watching well, it with James fucking Corden's cunty face there. It would ruin it. Okay, but I listen know, but to this, though. The um, Kate Blanchett's character in Lord of the Rings. Uh, yeah. What's her face? Um, uh, Queen Galadriel. Galadriel or whatever. Okay, imagine Kate Blanchett was unavailable to do uh, to do the part, and instead they got Mike Myers to do it. I feel like he would fit perfectly, right? Like, like imagine Austin Powers smiling and stuff like that, but like with the makeup and the dress on and stuff, he'd be mm. perfect. I think he'd fit in there perfectly. It's a good shout. We can't get Kate Blanchett. Yeah. What about Mike Myers? <laughs> <laughs> All right, fuck it. Let's just get James Gordon in. It's fine. It's fine. So no, seriously, I, I mean, there's a bit, there's this real thing where celebrities can pull you out of a movie or or an immersive thing right like yeah yeah I, it happened to me a little bit with stephen fry and the hobbit which the hobbit movies weren't good anyway and let's just forget about them but but stephen fry I, I didn't. I don't hate Stephen Fry, but it was one of these moments where it kind of. I was just like, oh, I don't want him to be in it. I know. I don't need him in it. Like, I, I, you, you almost sometimes prefer the unknowns, and I think a lot of times when a big budget thing is going, even even back with the original Star Wars or the modern reboot of Star Wars with old um, what's her, what's her name? She was and and you know um, what's the, the what's the new the Last Jedi the new yeah oh, the, new the Last Jedi is the yeah, it was uh, Kylo um, Ren the and, and the new. The book I mean, of Boba I, Fett. I mean, I, I'm a big Star Wars fan, but you know, the 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 prequel trilogy. I know that people people that are in their twenties now kind of grew up with those films and have a lot of fondness for them, and a lot of you know, you can watch them for the memes and everything. They're terrible movies. But the Jar Jar no, Binks no ones. Debate. Yeah, they're all they're all terrible. Oh man, I but the know. New, the Force the Awakens. New three, the Force Sorry. Awakens was pretty good. The Force I Awakens. It was. And do you know what though? The characters were were, were relatively. Unknowns, you know, yeah, with yeah. Adam Driver, he was a relative unknown. Daisy Ridley, 100%. oh, the Force uh, Awakens, Boyega, I they, enjoyed a lot. They actually. were kind of, they were kind of fresh, nice. like fresh actors, and so it allowed them to build this universe on a kind of framework of, you know, it, it wasn't like it was fucking Matt Damon right. and Ben Affleck. Do you know what I mean? It was like, oh Jesus, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't like. You weren't, you weren't, you didn't have preconceptions, right? right? But there's a I reason think... for that: is that sometimes the the movie or the source material is bigger than a star. Like if you look at, say, Mission Impossible, this is a Tom Cruise vehicle, right? If you look at a Russell Crowe movie, it's a Russell Crowe movie. You can't have an ensemble cast for Lord of the Rings of big stars because then which of them 
has the most screen time and whose movie yeah. is it? I mean, if Liam Neeson is, is in it as Boromir, he's in it for like five minutes, then he fucking croaks it. No offense, don't want to spoil or anything. But you know, he, he's only in the first film. He's not. He only appears halfway through. You get to the uh, to the city of the elves, and then fucking yeah. Mike Myers turns up, and you're it's just only like, Holy Rivendell. Shit, this is fucking Mike this Myers is, here. is Elrond, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. So well, they, you kind yeah. of the Murphy. source material is big enough. <laughs> you don't want to have a superstar in the role. You want to have a series of good actors that maybe were not fabulously well known unless they really are meant to be You're the main right. driving force like Iron Man and the idea is about, but people like Marlon Brando Orson Welles and you know in the original Star Wars it was um, the guy who was Obi-Wan god I've, I'm useless today Alec my Guinness fucking memory Alec Guinness they, they, were, they were used as a billing to attract people because they thought we can't do a movie without a name. You need you like know? a big name, um, at least, like some something. Yeah, to... so, so there is there is still that thing that. But happens. that's that's sort of a, creating a new dynasty of movies, isn't it? Star Wars, Lord of the Rings is such a state, a storied, uh, you know, thing. It's like but such I a legend. But I think even that back then it was like it, it's a legendary book series. But I think it was a risk to take this this big budget thing. And I mean, even Ian McKellen as Gandalf is so iconic, right? I mean, yeah, he, yeah. He, he was. I don't know if it I ever was that... a huge risk, though. I think, I, I think with like with enough enough money and effects and uh, and 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 some decent casting, like that was always going to be pretty know. big. I think fantasy could always be a risk, though, yeah. right? Because there's the chance. Because I think Lord of the Rings had tried stuff before and it all flopped and failed, and yeah. being a bit of a sad. Yeah, I mean, but thing. having said that, though, I guess the Hobbit movies just didn't do as well at all. Well, they right? sucked. They were really. They sucked. They were awful. Well, what they not well. It, it's about adaptation, yeah. though, too. Like, I think Lord of the Rings, the book, is a slog. It's out of date. It was written a long time ago. It was it was a foundation of fantasy, and yeah. as a result, like, it's 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 aged poorly versus modern fantasy, and and so they really had to bring it up to date. And I think they did a great job. Yeah. You know, I think, but but it was such a huge work for old Peter Jackson. Do you know you what? Know, all... he, he could have made it worse for himself because they were trying to cast Nicolas Cage as Aragorn. Holy crap. Oh, no my way. God. <laughs> can, can you imagine how much pushback he must have given for this? Like, God. Like, he must have had to fight. But then The Hobbit, it, he just had, couldn't fight anymore. Do you know what I mean? He was like... He was like... Because he had to... I think he had to come in and save the Hobbit trilogy, didn't he? Because it was originally going to be directed by Guillermo de Toro or something. Do you remember him in like did, yeah, del, del Toro? Del Toro. Yeah. There were some other issues where he pulled out because he couldn't couldn't be asked. Yeah, and, and that happens often. And it was yeah. the, it was a very strange thing, and he and he realized it was so daunting because Lord of the Rings was so good. He was like, God, yeah. how do I make something that this 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 good with half the budget in half the time? You know. Mm -hmm. So I think I think it was this whole kind of embarrassment. How about how about Jake Jake Gyllenhaal as Frodo Baggins? Wow, was that actually a consideration? Yeah, Jeez. yeah, yeah. But no one told him he was going to have to do a British accent, and he was like, "Oh no, I can't do that." So he didn't do it. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's, Patrick it's, Stewart, it's such Patrick a weird Stewart one, isn't it? Americans Gandalf. trying to do American actors trying to do British accents is uh, is is much more of a miss than I feel British actors doing American accents, right? Like there's. Yeah, plenty I of mean, really I, I good think, examples of British actors doing yeah. really good American portrayals and and accents. I and agree, stuff. and but not so much the other it's side. It's quite easy to do an American accent that isn't particularly placeable if you're American. Yeah, to hear a Brit like, for example, in The Wire, uh, when uh, what's his name, uh, Dominic, uh, is it Dominic West's yes, accent? Yes, yes, is just kind of vaguely American. Yeah. And he's joked about it since that his accent was. He just went, oh, I, you know. We gotta solve this case, dude. You know, it's <laughs> yeah, like yeah, just yeah. Generic. He did good, though. But he did. He did. He, really he did good. all right. But anyone who was actually American could surely hear that and go, "Okay, this guy isn't American." Like it was. It was fairly obvious, right? But then there but are I there think... are certain American accents where it's like the like the 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 sort of like classic New York accent or, or whatever. You know what I mean? Like that. Some of them don't. But that's meant to be the hardest one to do. Yeah. Like the 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 really specific. Regional or like Fraser Fraser Crane's accent, like I don't know what right. the fuck that is, but like, but like, is it Martin Freeman in in Fargo? Like, oh his yeah, accent, yeah, like the, everybody said that that is like perfect, the Minnesota it's like a Minnesota accent, yeah. accent right? Yeah. So, I think if it's really unusual, then you just practice that. But if you just want to do generic American accent that'll sort of get by, yeah. you can do that. But a British I accent, think, is I think quite the accents work so well to, in sci-fi though to establish like 
you could use kind of people with odd ad accents to put them in all sorts of weird places, like like data from um, Star Trek, right? He has this weird American accent. It's kind of like Cary Grant almost. He's Americans, his... but it's a very specific localized. Hey, Dick Van Dyke in uh, Mary Poppins. Uh, this was <laughs> yes, very good. Exactly. Very good. It, it kind of can sometimes inform Mary Poppins. <laughs> Emily Blunt <laughs> is English, and she does a cracking American accent. But yeah, you know, well, I didn't you know, wouldn't, you wouldn't I, know when I was watching the wire and um like I, I did not know who um idris elba was oh yeah no his accent was I, I assumed he was just an american actor or whatever like i was completely i i, I was Same. floored to find out that he was oh, me too proper, yeah. proper london british like like it's insane it's crazy yeah it was really good. i really i yeah that was i i loved that man anyway no lord of the rings Huge, huge fan. Um, I think it, I think some of these casting choices are quite interesting because I wonder how I didn't. I think the Hobbit casting choices didn't help those movies. Yeah. Well, either. they sucked as well, which was a big problem. I mean, uh, I, I mean, they just. Sucked. I feel like as a result, I've kind of. I, I guess there's nothing about redeeming it. about the Hobbit movies. Like, I'm sorry, but they're they're just dreadful. They took everything that was good about the Lord of the Rings and and ruined it. But the it. Hobbit was uh, was only one book as well, from what I remember. It was a, not even a very big book. No, I remember and reading it when I was stretched it and dragged very young. it, and oh. and I enjoyed it enough. Yeah, same. It was, it was okay. I loved it as a kid. It was great. Yeah. Like it was it was really good, but. I mean, if you look at that, when I started watching it, the opening scene, which in the book is quite long, of all the dwarves turning up at at, uh, at Bilbo's house and him sort of having to reluctantly feed them, and they then they all agree to go off and and do this quest. Um, I, I remember reading that and thinking, well, girl, this is a bit you know boring as as a kid. But then you just get through it, and then it gets interesting, and they go into Mirkwood, and they fight the spiders, and the, then there's the trolls, and all this kind of, you know, it's good. Yeah. And then the with Smog the dragon and everything, and it was really exciting as a kid. I really thought this is great. And it was like my first introduction to fantasy. And you look at what he made with those three movies, and it was like, it felt like a fan film of Lord of the Rings, but with an unlimited budget. Because that the Lord of the Rings trilogy made so much money that I think they just said to him, just do whatever you want. And so he just chucked effects at everything, chucked stuff in that was sort of very vaguely associated with it. And it, it was just such extended, drawn out effect sequences. It was unbearable. It lost all the heart and soul that Lord of the Rings had yeah. in in favor of just a fucking roller coaster ride. It was it was shambolic. It was it was really really bad. I hate it. Also, so so there there is a fan a couple of fan edits that you can download that cut download. the movie down to about to about th two and a half three hours. Yeah, they're like you could torrent them. Is um, there a product I could use to mask where I'm downloading it from? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, no, I don't know okay. of any. No. Not today. Um, <laughs> right, okay. Not today. <laughs> this is a, this is a, a bit. It, it, I, I haven't watched it, but Ben greatly recommends right. it and says it's actually watchable. They cut out all the romance between um, Kate from Lost oh, and the God. sexy dwarf. I hate romance. Uh, they oh. cut out the bit where Gandalf has like a side quest and stuff like that. There's like a whole thing where he goes off on his own for a bit and does a thing. Yeah, what the fuck? That's all I gone. Mean, it's just all shit and apparently, like, like apparently, it's pretty good when when it's cut from nine hours down to mm. two and a half. Mm. So yeah, maybe it should have uh, just been a two and a half or in. Yeah, I should have just made one with. fucking yeah, movie, one nice movie, and then you know just. I don't know on. if that was him or the studio though. I don't know if they said if you want to do this, it's got to be three. I, uh, because they just all they see is dollar signs, right? Yeah. So yeah, I don't know true. if they said that, and he was like, "Fuck, true. now we've got to make this one book into three movies." Like I, I, what Peter Jackson did with Lord of the Rings, I, I can't doubt him and his heart. Like I, I just honestly have to think, assume as a studio. If anyone knows, do tell us in the fucking comments. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. we, we want to be the, we want to know, we, we need to know, we must know. <laughs> can I, if we're done with Lord of the Rings stuff, can I say that I watched uh, something interesting that maybe you guys have seen or maybe not, but you should Go check it. out. It's interesting. It was a uh, Mister Rogers documentary called "Won't You Be My Neighbor." Uh, not the film. But Not a documentary. the film. It okay. was an actual documentary, and it was really good. Really interesting. I will interesting. watch that. Yeah, because yeah. I'm a I'm a big fan. Um, yeah, man. I mean, it's... I thought the the movie was actually pretty good. The Tom Hanks one. The Tom Hanks movie. I, yeah, I haven't seen that. Really I haven't seen that. But uh, but this this documentary is called "Won't You Be My Neighbor," and it was it was really nice, really good. Just um, just showed you sort of you know him starting his you know mr rogers neighborhood yeah getting the funding for public television um his sort of crusade against commercial television and you know what he thought was not good for 
for children and his all of his work with like yeah. childhood yeah. psychology he really and stuff gave like a shit like he that's really so did rare. he really he did gave a shit. and uh what, what there's a, a near the end of the documentary when they're talking about um you know because he died in i think it was like 2003 and it was it was kind of sad because you know like like if you watched mr rogers when you were a kid and you remembered the messages in the in the in the in the programs and you know just his his general sort of um sensibility and, and stuff like that but even that's a message right yeah you know it was always it's... very gentle very calm very nice you know like it was just you could see why it was so popular it was it was so out there but and there's nothing else like it but it was it was just so perfect too but, I think um, it was just I think he was really ahead of his time as well in addressing yes. something that hasn't been addressed really and in fact some people are preying on it which is which is a, a mm -hmm. crime yeah. uh, which is especially in young men the anger and yes. he he did a big thing and you can see him talk about it in the senate speech that he did um about dealing with anger and how you cope with that and yeah. rather than fucking fan those flames and say that being angry all the fucking time which everybody seems to be these days he was like, we should not be this angry. You must learn to cope with your feelings and not give in to them. It's a bit like the fucking dark side, you know, easier, yeah. quicker, more seductive. Like, you know, you don't want to give in to that. No. He was basically Yoda for a generation of people. Yeah, yeah. It was, it's sad because near the, near the end uh, when he did die and, uh, the, the, you know, the, where, the, the direction society was moving in at the time and stuff, you know, this is a couple of years after like 9-11. This yeah. was a couple of years after, you know, the internet started getting um, fairly prominent and, and big and stuff and um he was um he 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 had there was people in his like you know in his um in production unit so, for the show who were were gay but not openly gay because at the time it really wasn't the, the thing right right and especially not to be um involved in a children's program as well like there was just no way that they could sort of uh, make that public or whatever but he was always very supportive of uh, people he worked with his friends tolerant everything and um and 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 later on after he died like while his funeral was 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 on across the street there was like a big protest about like a like basically a hate a hate group who were um criticizing him for being tolerant of uh of of homosexuals and like yeah. they had children with them protesting and everything and apparently these children just looked really miserable because like <laughs> they probably watched the show right <laughs> poor I guys mean, passed away and he, your he, uh... insane parents are dragging you out in the rain to protest possibly the dumbest but thing he, ever he did he did some little little protests of his own on the show like very famously the the mailman they, they had a black mailman that's right and yeah he shared the paddling pool with him that's as right a fuck yeah. you to people saying that that any person of color shouldn't be able to get in a white pool yeah and that you know if they did they'd have to drain the water like it had somehow been infected this was the era that he was making these tv shows he was uh, yeah in. it was super ahead of his time it was insane yeah and, and the, the 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 sort of like weird part of the whole thing was that he was like you know very very religious you know what i mean yeah, yeah like oh, he if, was yeah yeah you, you and you, like sometimes like they there's there's like negative um connotations like with with this because you assume that like especially in a place like like america if you are very religious you aren't going to be tolerant of like, exactly you know yeah. uh homosexuality or, anything or, like, yeah, or any yeah. progressive stuff right but like but he yeah, was I, like I, it was I, insane i think this obviously like i think working with kids and this is something you two obviously know more than i do but they i get the impression that they have quite a blank slate when when and they ask questions like oh you know is everyone equal you know and so it's like why can that man not come in the pool with us do you know what i mean if everyone's equal you know because because as adults you're always like well yeah of course everyone's equal of course of course it doesn't matter what creed well, you are what some what of sex us are like are, that what... some people yeah. well, are definitively I, but I think modern, not like that well i think actually you know modern good americans or pe people ever since you know for a while now certainly you know have have felt like like there should be things should be a certain way and kids can sometimes you know almost remind them like oh well if things are supposed to be a certain way why are we still overlooking this you know and so i think when you're surrounded when you're working and making content for um i, I want to say blank slates but like kind of kind of the future generations of people yeah. you know it does make you question everything around you uh, 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 question your own beliefs and morals too i think in in many ways i think people are very stubborn 
or fixed on their views. I mean, certainly I'm a very anti-religion in general, partly because of the way that you can twist the words to be any way you want them. But I think if you take them in the best possible way or yeah. examine them in all the different ways they could be interpreted, I think it does lead you to a often hum humanitarian kind of viewpoint. I think a lot of these things are positive and, and want you to look after each other and yeah, good to each I, other. Those, you know? those aspects of religion, I am definitely on board with, you know, like... Um, like the like the community side of it, you know, like the, the the charitable side of it, the you know, like uh, forgiveness of all men and uh, and and whatever, like uh, all those things, yes. But I I I switch off when they're like, well, God in the Bible says that you can't do this specifically, and it's like, well, it, the, nowhere in the Bible is it saying specifically not to do like this one certain thing that people have only become aware of like you know right. 2000 years later or whatever come on now it's but the, it's what crazy. you're listing what you're listing is essentially anyone with any humanitarian feelings yeah and that's predates religion yeah uh, and so I, I think when we cherry pick the good parts of religion and say see religion can be good i'm i'm not religious no but i think i feel it... all of those things and i did not inform my opinion and no. if you look at what religion is it is incredibly intolerant very, yeah. very, very, I mean, we're, we're literally listing Mr. Rogers in, as an exception. And we were like, he's very religious, which is surprising because he was really progressive. That's it, exactly. Like, we don't need religion to tell us, oh, well, there are some good sides to it. No, there are some good sides to humanity. Yeah. Religion is one of the worst bits that you stick on top that ruins that good side, but claims to be the best of us. That's yeah, how yeah. I feel about mm. it. Yeah. Oh, I, no, I did too. watch something else as well. Severance. Oh my God, Niles, you recommended. There's only two episodes There's out. There's only two the out. Moment. The next one comes out tomorrow. It's on Apple TV. So interesting. What is it's, it? It's about, I don't want to spoil anything. I'm not going to spoil anything. Okay. I will give you the opening couple of scenes, I guess. It's uh, the, the show opens with a woman on a table in a conference room, unconscious, and a right. voice comes <laughs> through a tiny speaker and she's dressed like an office worker. She's clearly in a place of work. And you think, is she drunk or something? And then this voice comes and says, wake up. And it asks her these five questions. Uh, what is your name? You know, wh what state are you from? Where are you right now? And a couple of other things. And she gets them all basically wrong. And <laughs> okay. a guy comes in the door and says, that was a perfect score. And that's how the score, <laughs> how the, the story opens. She has no idea why she's there. She fails to answer any of these questions. And he tells her that is a perfect score. Right. And you sort wow. of go from this there. It's like, sounds, a, this it's really great. interesting. It's like a near future uh, office that they work in. And it's it's fascinating. There There is one scene where he's having dinner uh, a dinner party at his, I think it's his sister's house with her and her partner. And it's a dinner party with no food, which is exactly the sort of stupid fucking trendy bullshit you can imagine people coming up with. Yeah. And they justify yeah. it by saying, isn't this more interesting? Because I feel like the food gets in the way. And he's like, how can it be a dinner party with no food? And then they're talking about history. And they, they, one of them has this, he'd read this article about World War One. He goes, apparently they didn't call it World War One because I suppose that would have been a faux pas. Ha 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 ha. And the guy, the main character, had studied history, and he was like, well, they didn't call it that because it hadn't been in World War II. And they're all like, oh, yeah, huh. And I'm thinking this is a really, really interesting <laughs> sound because you could absolutely <laughs> imagine in some near future where World War I is, is literally ancient history that you don't even learn about in school, that that's the same stupid opinion that say we've expressed when it comes to like Napoleon and shit like that. Yeah, we just yeah, don't yeah. Yeah, it happens yeah, so long yeah, ago, you know? nobody right. cares. It's just a vague <laughs> idea in my head. You yeah, know? Yeah. So it's like that. So that was really funny. Um, and sort of the, well, you know, what is considered social norms and, and the way people are living then. And then also this other thing with his job. So I, I recommend it. There's a lot, of, there's a lot to it. It's, a, it's brilliant. I'll check it's that out. Brilliant. That sounds good. Yeah. It yeah. Sounds like that does sound like, like a watch. great tip. All right. Well, I think we should end it there. Thank you everyone for, for joining us again on our podcast of TV and movie <laughs> recommendations. Yes. Thank you very much. I am uh, Gene Siskel and I give it one big, huge, uh, maybe. Thank you very much <laughs> for watching. Thank you, everyone. See you guys next right, time. Take it Bye -bye. easy. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.